You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fun episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you guys for being with us here in Austin, sort of, New Braunfels, I guess. Glad that you can be with us. We really, really appreciate every single time you spend whatever time of day it is for you with us on this podcast. Thank you. Yes, thank you for spending your time with us. Shortly, I'll be spending my time in Lederhosen. So let's get this party going. <laughs> I think we should show a picture of that. Oh man. I don't I, know if that's gonna happen. No, but. no, no, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> but uh, I do love Lederhosen and I do love today's question. We're gonna be talking again, just more of a deep dive on, uh, on a couple of mapping solutions uh, it's the all-in-one workflow mapping solutions, kind of talking about that and uh, the differences between some apps and maybe why if you're really trying to build a business where you can be flexible and always deliver a deliverable because you understand concepts and processes and workflows, then you're definitely going to want to check out this show, which is brought to you by our good friends, that's right, of the Drone U community. If you're not a part of the community, join the largest drone community, but also the most in-depth, the most detailed. It's a community unlike any other on Facebook. It's also full of 33 classes, but it's up to you on what classes you take and what you wanna learn. The business course just launched and I think you'll be really excited to see the detail in that course. It may make you think twice about you know how you're running things or, or what to do, but if you want all that and more, just join the drone community or the drone you community, go to droneu.education. Hey guys, this is Nick from Iowa. I don't hear much about the Skycatch program for processing images and stuff. I hear more about Drone Deploy, and I was wondering what the advantage of Skycatch would be over that. Thanks. Love the show. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate the question. Thanks for taking the time. And if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. We'd love to hear from you as well. So back to that cloud processing that always seems to give you heartburn and, and serious mappers heartburn. It does Why is me, that? <laughs> it gives me serious mappers heartburn uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, reason number one is that I believe that any business that is going to be successful over the long term must have a firm understanding of the workflow that they have to do to acquire imagery, but they also have to have a firm understanding of the necessary workflow for processing. There are so many things that can go wrong in processing and there are so many, um, how do I say this, systems that you have to follow in order to ensure a, a map void of error and no map is really completely you know, void of error, but you're trying to get the most accurate map possible. And I mean, some of the simplest concepts will have an astronomical effect on the accuracy of your map. I mean, we've talked about that before. We've had Ongood from Pix4D on the show before. Um, and we've talked about those things. So I really firmly believe that if we're gonna give someone knowledge and information for them to make money or to produce really good detailed information, I'm only going to feel good about teaching that curriculum to a person if they're able to go out and repeat it over and over again. They're able to use it. If they run into a problem, they understand how to solve that problem. Right. They're given the tools. They're given the information to say, I know how all this stuff works together. I understand the relationships in, in between the, those different variables. And I understand how to manipulate those variables to produce great maps. Because what happens if you, if you go in the field, right? You go out and you're used to using drone deploy and you're, let's say you're, you know, mapping a ranch or you're scouting a location for a film set and they want to map it, which by the mm -hmm. way, we're going to have um, someone very important uh, from the film industry coming on the show very soon to talk about how they're using drones for mapping, not for film. So really excited to go over that. But long and the short of it is if you were to go out to a film set and there's, they want to map it, you know, before everyone shows up and they want to scout it. You go out there, you pull up drone deploy, or you pull up these solutions and you have no internet um, and you have no way to preload the area or uh, you're having a glitch with the app because your iOS or your iPhone 10 is running on iOS 11 and not iOS 12. And now, you know, these applications have 
created updates on firmware. Like I've had firmware problems with everything, including Pix40. Like mm -hmm. no one is immune from that at all. No one. Well, and each of these jobs is so unique, right? They all have their own um, elements that you have to deal with. And when it's being processed sort of in the back end by somebody else via the cloud, you don't have control over, like you said, how to manipulate and get the most out of that data set. Not only do you not have control, the other thing is, you know, a lot of these cloud processing companies have realized even some of the things that we've been saying on the show, the fact that you can't do MTPs, you can't do GCPs, you can't manually merge maps together, you can't create what's called manual GCPs when you've got floating GCPs in your maps. All of these things they're realizing that they can't do. So they've hired teams of people to do this stuff on the back end, mm -hmm. which is, it's fascinating, number one. But number two, they're realizing that these solutions that are hyped up to be all in one aren't typically all in one. And before we go into the details of Skycatch and Drone Deploy, which I think that there are some benefits over Skycatch, a lot of these companies like Skycatch are getting into this deep workflow with mapping because they're trying to localize the entire process. But again, if you don't have a good understanding of mapping, how can you ensure that you're going to reliably capture data over and over again, and you're going to reliably process that data, and you're going to work through the problems and learn these things to create a super efficient workflow so that you can hammer out surveys. Let me ask you this. Do you know the difference between a flight plan for a survey grade accurate map on land versus a survey grade accurate map with a house? Do you know the difference in acquisition style? It's not just, oh, I'm going to run a double grid at 70 over here, and I'm going to do this over <laughs> here. No, 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 no. They're very different flight paths, and there's typically two to three separate flight paths. And sometimes the house could re require terrestrial imagery. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that you have to create your baseline map super accurately. I'm not going to go into how to do it. You should take my class on how to do it because we have a class on this. We go over acquisition styles. I mean, the, uh, the main difference of our mapping class versus others is we give you forms, workflows, things to help you. I mean, we give you literally the different acquisition strategies, what they mean, what they're good for, what all the settings that you need to set, that's all in one document. I mean, you're not gonna get this in other places because I wanna give you the tools so that you can always assess the situation where you are and make the right call to get the data correctly the first time. All right. And you, and, you, and you learn how to tweak your acquisition strategies by understanding the processing part of it, which is, yes, is, which which is, is what you're talking about. It's integral. Right. Gosh, thank you so much for saying that, Rob, because that is so important. A lot of people fundamentally don't understand the importance of acquisition strategy until they get into the processing exactly. side. And I think a perfect example, and I know PJ was there with me, who's standing here off camera. Hey, PJ. Um, in, that, his in his leader hosen, by the way. Um, <laughs> Uh, he, we had some students from the Oroville Dam. If you remember the big Oroville Dam? Mm -hmm. They were mapping the dam because it was leaking. California was afraid they were going to have huge floods because of all the water rushing out of this dam. And these guys were the ones out there mapping it. And they, you got to give them credit because, I mean, they worked their ass off just trying to get it, the right acquisition over and over again. But at the end of the class, a guy came up to me and he was just like, because of processing, I think I understood how I could have saved myself a few acquisition um, missions. And I think I could have done this m much more efficiently. And it was like, that yeah. really was powerful for me because someone who was doing such a massive job to come up to us after the class, I mean, PJ was there. That's huge. Yeah, no, and it says a lot, but you mentioned that there are some benefits to using drone deploy, those kinds of software solutions. What are they? Like there's a market for them. There is a market. For so them. I mean, a what lot is of that guys market? are looking for a seamless, you know, easy. I just need a you know, down and dirty, quick report. What I like about Drone Deploy is that, you know, it, it spits out nice, beautiful reports that help with cut and fill. It's really good for that. Um, but beyond that, ugh, I just, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be processing myself because I don't wanna take the time to upload the imagery to the cloud. I don't know who's uh, merging my maps in the back end on the cloud. I don't know what strategy they're using of marking GCPs. I don't know how many images they actually mark the GCPs in. I have no way to calibrate their, I have no way to verify and that they know what they're doing. So ultimately, I guess you could say you don't have any way of verifying the accuracy. I don't have. Right, because. Well, no, you can verify the accuracy through your GCPs and your checkpoints. But again, if they're not marking the GCPs very well and they're not hitting the same point every single time in 12 different images in a circular pattern to eliminate ellipsoid error, 
then yeah, how do you know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you know? Because you're not the one that did that. Exactly. Okay. So let's take a quick second. Skycatch. What is it? Why is it beneficial? Why are people using it? Skycatch is, you know, marketed as an end to end solution to really create more of a seamless workflow. They want to help you gather your data, process your data in a faster manner for people who need to create these cut and fill progressions or their topos, or they need to measure their elevations like on a weekly basis. So they need a solution that's just bang, 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 fire it up and go. Now Skycatch just released a new Edge product, which actually does on-site processing. So as you're flying around taking these images, they're getting downloaded to this machine that is actually processing all of your images at once. Hmm. I would love to try this system out. I've never tried it. I'd love to see the algorithm that they use to help determine how to process that map. I'd love to get that deep dive. Now, the reason- Because the concept is pretty cool. Yes, it is. It is I mean, if you need the day, if you need the uh, the deliverable- That fast? Fast, because in most cases you probably don't, but if you do- And look, for simple flight acquisition strategies, this could actually work really, really well. Yeah. So, I mean, it really could. Now, that being said, the, the understanding that I have as far as why people use Skycatch, um, number one is that they can take their cut and fills, they can take their DSMs, their DTMs, their point clouds, they can annotate them, they can mark them up, mm. they can overlay their CAD you know, profiles on them. These are all things that you can do in Pix4D BIM as well. But again, it's not, um, you know, they're really trying to work on creating a seamless workflow. But I mean, this sometimes when you're trying to create a seamless workflow with highly accurate mapping, it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, so I would just say quick summary is that if you're doing like basic level cut and fill where you only need to do, you know, certain things, it's great because you can annotate those maps. You can easily send it to clients. You can, you know, really just get your quick output fast. The only thing that I'll be careful of is I saw on there they're like, oh, reliable five centimeter accuracy with no GCPs. Um, my red flags are like, <laughs> so um, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, we'd love to see it. So who knows? Yeah, maybe true. we can give it a try. And I just want to say too, long. I haven't used Skycatch. This right. is just information that I've been gathering from other people who have been using Skycatch. Um, I did get a chance to ask them a bunch of questions at Airworks. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. Some of the things that they were doing. Um, but I'm just a skeptic of these cloud processing solutions in a whole. I love what Skycatch is doing by trying to bring the entire processing on site. I mean, how long is it gonna be, Rob, until we have an M600 with an X7 camera doing mapping with Pix4D with an onboard Raspberry Pi running Pix4D. <laughs> so literally as the image goes from the camera to the board, to the computer, into processing, so that by the time you land, step one's already done. That would be pretty amazing. Well, we're not far away. So cool. I'm not bombshell. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks again for listening. Um, if you've been working with Skycatch or these other processes and you have some things you want to add, I would love to hear it. I'm sure we'll be hearing from Skycatch soon. Um, but again, guys, if you're my point in saying what I'm saying is that I believe anyone in mapping should have a deep understanding of what they're doing, because that's the only way that you can reliably know what you're talking about, solve problems in the field, create maps reliably and accurately time and time and time again. A true master is only one who's gone through perfect practice. And it's not perfect practice, it's just really practice over and over again. And here's the thing, when you've been through these problems, when you you practice this stuff, you're gonna be more uh, adept to solve problems in the field. Like I can't, I can't stress this enough. I mean, there are so many things that can go wrong. The other day, my iPhone was not connecting to the GS14 to the end trip network. And I had to go into the data reader, back into the Windows file system, connect my phone, reset the DHCP, recorrect the whole thing, got my geoid corrections and my GPS, then went and mapped the whole thing. That was just a little problem with internet. Hmm. Which when you're using these systems is not unusual. No, and I know that everyone's trying to create these these on-site systems that don't need connectivity, but look, you know, depending on the type of GPS, you don't need connectivity, but it's my understanding that the most accurate GPS is connected to the internet. So, to apply that geoid error. Fantastic. And if you want to know more about GPS, check out our upcoming course called Survey Grade Mapping with myself and my buddy, Josh Baker. Movie star, Josh Baker. He's got a degree in uh, uh, geographic information. 
Geology. Geology. Just Geographic <laughs> information, geology. <laughs> but he worked in GIS as a Marine. So we're really excited to have Josh on board. And uh, if you want really engaging classes that have good, deep, detailed information that you'll retain and use in your business, then you've got to check out DroneU because we're just launching class after class after class. We've never had better quality. I'm super proud of our upcoming new Don't Crash course. Uh, we've added so much to that as well. I'm just really excited about where we're going. Me too. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Working with great people, having a good time. Yep. And most importantly, hopefully helping you guys. Yep, and hopefully helping out the enterprise people coming soon. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. All right, let's go to Horse Fest. Woo!